In this video, we're going to be covering Chapter 3, Section 2, Compound Statements and Connectives. Okay? Connectives are words such as and, or, if, then, if, and only if. Okay? These are used to combine two statements into a compound statement. Okay? When we're translating our um, statements into symbols, we're going to use this symbol as a conjunctive for the word and. So this means and. The way that I like to remember this is this N goes in this direction. Okay? The disjunction is going to be or and we represent it with the V symbol. Okay? So let's look at these two statements. Statement P says it is after 5 p.m. This is a true or false statement. Q, they are working. Another true or false statement. So let's go ahead and write it in symbolic form. It is after 5 p.m. Notice that this statement is the letter P. So I'm going to put P first. Here's that word and. There's my and symbol. And then the second statement is they are working. They are working. That is represented by Q. So here is my Q. For part B, it says that they are working. That's my Q. That goes first this time. And there's my symbol for and. It is after 5 p.m. There's my P statement. Look at what happens when we add those words not. It is not after 5 p.m. So remember that word not, we're going to use to represent that little squiggly line as the symbol. The 5 p.m. part is still our P, so here's our P. So we're saying not P, and there's my and symbol. They are working. That's the exact same statement I have here for Q, so I'm leaving Q exactly the same. Let's try a couple more. Let P be you graduate, and Q be you're satisfied the math requirement. So statement A says, you graduate or you satisfy the math requirement. Well, you graduate is represented by P, so there's my P. The symbol or is here, and then you satisfy the math requirement. That's the same thing as Q, so here we're saying P or Q. For part B, it says you satisfy the math requirement. That's the same thing as Q, so the Q goes first. Or, there's my or symbol, you do not graduate. This not is represented by the squiggly line and then the statement P. So we're saying you graduate. Well, here it's you, you did not graduate. So it's not P. So here we have Q or not P. Okay, so here we have an if-then statement. So anytime you have the words if then we are going to be using a arrow okay this is a conditional statement if this happens then this will happen okay all right for example a person is a father that's your p q is a person is a male so let's look at part a if there's my if if a person is a father then that person is male so if indicates that there has to be a conditional statement, so we're going to use one arrow. A person is a father, that's P. So here we have P, arrow, we put the arrow where we see the then. That person is male, a person is male, that's my Q. So this is read as if P, then Q. Okay, this is going to be a true statement. If a person is a male, then the person is a father. Let's look at this one. There's my if-then statement. A person is a male. That's our Q. There's my Q there. There's my arrow. Then a person is a father, which is P. So this is going to say if Q, then P. Well, this is not necessarily true, so that's why I have not necessarily true. 
not all people who are males are fathers. Okay? Right? Let's look at C. If a person is not a father, notice here that it is very similar to P, except we have that word not. So not means use that little squiggly line. So not P, then arrow, a person is not a male. There's the not sign. A male refers to Q. Okay. Let's look at the next one. If a person is male, so a person is male is Q. So here's my Q. Then there's my arrow. That person is not a father. So this not indicates it's the opposite of the statement we have up here. So we're going to have the little squiggly line and P. So if Q, then not P. Other translations for this statement here is going to be if P, then Q. If P, then Q. Another way it could be written is if it has the Q part first, Q, if P. That would still mean exactly like this. You can also say P is sufficient for Q. This is in replace of that if then. That would be written like this. Q is necessary for P. That's the same thing as this. P only if Q. Same thing as this. Only if Q. P. That's the same thing as this. Now, all of these are going to be part of your homework, but on your test, I will only choose that if-then statement. So I'm not going to make it confusing. You do not have to memorize these other um, versions. We're just going to use the first one. Okay, let's look at another. You exercise regularly. That will be statement P. Statement Q says you increase your chances of a heart attack. We're going to write this in symbolic form. Not exercising regularly is sufficient for increasing your chances of a heart attack. So notice on this one, you have the not exercising regularly. Here it says you exercise regularly. Here it's the not. So not P, there's my not P, is sufficient for. Notice on the other page, we have P is sufficient for Q. Q says your increase your chances of a heart attack for increasing your chances for a heart attack. That's my Q and therefore I write the symbol just like this. Okay. In this case it's not P is sufficient for Q. So I would have the not sign here and I would have the not sign here. This is the same thing. Okay. In the next one, we're going to look at biconditional. This is stated by an if and only if. So here we have a conditional statement and it has to go both ways. P will happen if and only if Q happens. Okay. Let's look at our first example. If a person is unmarried male, then that person is a bachelor. This is a true statement. Let's look at the other way around. If a person is a bachelor, then that person is an unmarried male. That is also true. So what we can say when these both are true, then we can use the biconditional statement. We can say if and only if a person is an unmarried male, then that person is a bachelor. That's how we would use the if and only. Both ways have to be true. Let's look at an example. The word is run. That's our statement P. Q, the word, has 396 meanings. First thing we're going to do is write this in symbolic form. The word has 396 meanings. That's the same thing as Q, so we're going to write Q first. If and only if, that means that we have to use this double arrow, the word is run. That's our P statement, so P goes second. Okay, let's do this one. 
The word is not run, so there's our not P because it's opposite of what the P statement says. So here I have not P. If and only if, that's our biconditional statement, so we use a double arrow, the word does not have 396 meaning. This is the opposite of Q, so you need to put the not Q after the if and only if or biconditional symbol here. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some other translations. Here it says P if and only if Q. This is the one we've been using. We can also say Q if and only P because remember either way it's going to be correct so we would use the symbol as well. You can say if P then Q and if Q then P. This is the same thing as saying if one way happens and then the other way happens, we could use this symbol. Okay? P is necessary and sufficient for Q. That's the same thing as this. And Q is necessary and sufficient for P. That's the same thing as this. So basically, if you can go one direction, you should be able to go the other direction as well. Let's go ahead and write some of these things in words. So here, this time, we're given the symbolic form and we're gonna go ahead and write out its meaning, okay? We're always gonna be given what the two statements are. P says he earns $105,000 a year. Q says he is often happy. So here it's saying not, and then in parentheses, P and Q. Let's consider how we would write this, okay? Since we have the not here first, if we're going to start with it's not true that he earns $105,000 a year, there's my and, and Q, that he is often happy, okay? So what we're doing here is we're putting this not in front of both of these statements. Let's look at the next one. Not Q and P. So he is not often happy. He is not often happy. There's my not Q and P. He earns $105,000 a year. Okay. Let's look at part C. Not. It is not true, there's my if then statement, that if Q, he is often happy, there's my arrow, then P, he earns $105,000 a year. These are a little bit tricky, but you have to go from symbolic form to word form, and you also need to be able to go from word form to symbolic form. Let's go ahead and look at some other combinations. Here we have a combination of using a third statement, okay? And we would read this as saying, if Q, there's my and, and not P, not P, there's my arrow, so I use the word then, not R, okay? An important thing to know is that whenever you have like these parentheses, that's where you're going to see your comma statement. So I'm combining everything here, and then I'm going to say then, not R. Okay. Look at the way it's written here. It says Q. I'm separating this together, but I put the comma before the and instead of after. So here I say Q and. This comma is like saying that all of this is together. If, because my arrow's inside, so then I'm going to say, and if, not P, there's my arrow, then, not R. So I'm, I'm reading it in the same direction. Your comma here goes um, not after the end, but before it, and that's just following English rules. It still says that this is separated from the Q. Okay, so let's use these three statements and we're going to go ahead and, and um, write in words what this means. Okay, P says the plant is fertilized. Q says the plant is not watered. Okay, so in this case Q is not watered which means not Q means the plant is watered. 
and then R says the plant wilts. Okay. Here we're putting all of this together, but we have to have the if in front because it's an if then statement. So I'm going to start with if P, P says the plant is fertilized. So if the plant is fertilized and, and not Q, which means the opposite of what this says, if this has not, we're going to take the not out. The plant is watered. So here, if the plant is fertilized and watered, there's my arrow, then not R, then the plant will not wilt. There's my um, not here, and it's the opposite of what R is. Okay, let's look at this one. P, which means the plant is fertilized. So the plant is fertilized, and there's my and statement. And then here, all of this needs to go together. It says, if, there's my if, it goes in front. If, not Q, which means, the plant is watered, and if the plant is watered, then, there's my then statement, not R. Then the plant will not wilt. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a few other ones and their meanings. All right, so if you have a statement like this, P, if P, then Q, and not R. The meaning is that these two must be together. So we're going to make this and we're going to say it's conditional. If you have something like this, your parentheses will be with the P and Q before. So put the parentheses with the Q and uh, P and Q. This is also conditional. For this one, you have two. Okay, if you have a statement that looks similar to this, our parentheses are going to be around the if Q then R statements. Okay, it's going to be biconditional because you have the double arrow. So anything that has a double arrow is going to be biconditional. Right here, your biconditional statement is at the end. So you're going to have parentheses around the if P then Q, if and only if R means biconditional. Okay, this next one you have P and not Q. That's all going to be in parentheses first, then R or S. This has a single arrow, so it's going to be conditional. Okay. If you have something that looks like this, it's not clear. It means it could be this, or it could look like this. So these other ones, they have essentially they have rules. So you'll see where the parentheses are based on where your arrows are. But when it comes to the it and or statement, you have to be very clear and you have to identify which one it is. So be careful on this one because when you're doing your test and you're trying to write it in symbolic form, you need to make sure the parentheses go where they are. So let's go ahead and write a few of these things in symbolic form. Here we have our three statements. There is too much homework. The teacher is boring, and I take the class, P, Q, and R. If there's too much homework or a teacher is boring, then I do not take that class. All right, so as you can see, I've already kind of broken up the statement. Uh, whenever I see a comma, I know that there's going to be parentheses there, so I'm going to go ahead and put my parentheses around um, the word there and at the end where it says boring. So here's my if then statement, so I know I have an arrow. So let's go ahead and read this again. If there is too much homework, well, that matches the statement P. So I'm gonna start with parentheses and I'm gonna say P. Or, that's a V symbol. A teacher is boring, that matches the Q statement, so I'm gonna put Q. The comma indicates your parentheses, then indicates the arrow. I do not take their class. Well, if R is I do take their class, then not is going to be not R. I do not take their class. Let's do part B. There is too much homework, or if a teacher is boring, then I do not take that class. So here, notice that you have the comma in front of there is too much homework. 
here's my or statement so basically on here I know I'm going to look at this one statement being completely by itself that comma is before the or because it has to be for grammatical correctness so that means the second statement is going to be grouped in parentheses together so let's go ahead and read this again there is too much homework well that matches my P there's too much homework so I have that statement as P or is represented by this symbol if there's my if then statement so I'm going to have a single arrow but I want to see what goes first a teacher is boring that's a Q statement so I put my Q here then that's where I put my arrow I do not take that class there's the not so I have to put not R so in other words this statement is written as P or if Q then not R Okay, that concludes 3.2. It will take some practice. I suggest you do all of your homework um, and let me know if you have any questions.